Hello, welcome to Cat's Diamond Painting or welcome back if you've joined me here before. Sorry for the long delay since I last posted a video. I have been on holiday. I think I posted the Friday or so before I went away the following Wednesday and I had intended to film something in that time and just time got away from me. School holidays, packing, you know how it goes. <laughs> So I haven't and I am still up to my eyes in unpacking because we got back last night so I'm really not even you know properly back into diamond painting yet but I had this delivery while I was away and I can't wait to have a look at it so I thought I would pop on a quick video while I have a look at this today. So as you can see I've been buying from Diamond Art Club again. I have broken my no buy. <laughs> Well, it's not really, it's it's a kind of a no buy unless I really, 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 really want it. You know, just not doing the kind of impulse buys where I, I like it a lot, but you know, I could live without it. But if I really, really want a painting, and particularly if it's going to be limited edition, I will go for it. This one wasn't a limited edition, but it was the first painting in a really long time that I've looked at and just been like, wow, I have to work on that painting. So let's take a little look. So I've got a couple of other things in here. Just remove the bit with my name on. I bought another of these little uh, single places that I mentioned in a previous video. These are um, like steel single places. They're shaped, if you can see, exactly like the sort of typical brass places that you get in normal pens. Whereas other steel single places that I've got have a different kind of almost funnel shape and they have this really narrow space to put the wax in the pen. And I don't like them because I just, I find they don't grip it very well. They do, loads of people love them. They just don't seem to work for me. I really like these because they work exactly like the brass ones. They just don't get bent out of shape. So I got myself another one of those. The other thing I bought in this purchase, um, besides what I'm going to show you today, is Otter. Look at this sweet little painting. So this one came out in the same week as the painting I'm going to show you today, Still Waiting. And Otters are my animal mad son's favourite animal. So I showed it to him kind of knowing how that would go. And he was like, oh, can we get it? Can we get it? So I said, will you work, will you work on it with me again? Because when I first started diamond painting, he did a couple and he really enjoyed it. And then he got out of the habit. So I was like, I don't mind doing the majority of the work on it, but it'd be nice if we could work on it together. He was like, yeah, 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 yeah. So I bought that. So I can't open this one up today because it's for him mainly. So we're going to open that up together. But if it is one that you'd like to see um, an unboxing of or anything as I get further on and start working on it, do let me know um, and I'm sure I can do that at a later point. But the main event for today is still waiting. Let me have, oh, hold it so you can see. It is heavy. This is a big painting. <laughs> so... This is Still Waiting by Yume Art and it is a square diamond painting and it's 98 by 65 centimetres. So I say it's big. I mean, it is a big painting. I've got bigger in my stash. Diamond Art Club go way bigger than this, but it's a pretty sizable painting. So I saw this one and I just loved it straight away. It just absolutely drew me in and I decided to buy it pretty much straight away. I was a little bit stressed because I hadn't wanted to buy anything when I was going on holiday and I didn't know how the delivery would work. But anyway, <laughs> that's a whole other story. But I really wanted to buy it. And then when it came out, it was 20% off for a short while. And you could still add one of Diamond Art Club's discount codes on top of that. So that made it a lot more affordable and an absolute no-brainer. I really like how it goes with um, Secure Festival, another painting by the same artist that Diamond Art Club stocks, which you may be familiar with. I have that one in my stash and I haven't actually worked on it yet. It sat there for a little while and it's one I'm going to pull out one day. I reckon this one might jump the queue because I just love, love, love this artwork. I'll talk a little bit more about why it particularly drew me in when I get to having a look at the canvas. 
So let's have a look in the painting. In the box even. <laughs> so I've got it all upside down now. Let's have a look in the box. First things first, I've got the toolkit and my side sticker. I say side sticker because that's how I use them. Actually, people use these for log boxes. They put them on the top of the boxes. They just keep them. They do all sorts. But I like to put them on the side just because the way they fit best in my cupboard is to have them stacked sideways on. So that's the way that I can see what painting it is. Shall we look at the toolkit? What have we got this time? <laughs> oh, I like that colour pen. I'm such a geek for accessories. I don't even use these pens. I use my pens that are sort of more ergonomic and comfortable for me. <laughs> but I still like to have a pretty pen. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, I normally save looking at the cover minder for last, but that fell out and it is so beautiful. Oh, I think that's one of my favourite cover minders I've had. It's so nice. Nice strong magnet. Cover minders are for holding the plastic cover back off your canvas when you're working, if you're not familiar with what this bit is. If you get a kit from Diamond Art Club or various other providers now, they often put these in. It'll be a little something, a pretty something with a magnet on the back. And the idea is you put the magnet behind your canvas, you put the pretty bit on the top over the plastic cover that you want holding out of the way of your work area. Oh, you don't drop the magnet. <laughs> and they connect through the canvas and hold it out the way. That's also really nice washi tape that I have with this one. I like that a lot too. The squishy and pen match, which is a really nice touch with these newer Diamond Art Club kits. And just to quickly whiz through the rest of it, because you've probably seen it all before, I've got a seven placer and a four placer. They'll be useful. I've got a caddy with two plates of heart-shaped wax. Diamond Art Club wax is really good. There are lots of other waxes out there. Different people get on with different kinds. I quite like just the simple pink wax when it's good quality like this. One of these plates will last me several paintings. So I have absolutely years worth of diamond painting wax available to me now, having bought a few Diamond Art Club kits. I've got some tweezers there. These ones don't open especially wide. They may not be the most useful, but. You get these with most square quits, quits? <laughs> most square kits from most providers. So generally, if you've bought a few kits, you'll have plenty of tweezers to choose from. And there is my tray with a stopper. It's a nice flat one. Sometimes these come a little misshapen. That one looks like it might be quite useful. So I'll get those packed away. I forgot to say you also get a little roll of baggies. Okily dokily. Now, how shall I do this? So I am going to have a look at what's inside here. I'm not going to be able to get the whole canvas in frame because it's a beast. Um, so I'll show you what I can. And then I will do a pan over it to show you some more details up close. But before I do that, oh, if I can figure out how to get in. <laughs> open up this dust cover. Sometimes these open more smoothly than others. That one's ripped, but it's fine. It's still usable. So. Let me get my, my innards out. <laughs> okay, big beastie bag of drills. If you haven't ordered from Diamond Art Club again, um, their kits will come with a little leaflet like this, which will give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to diamond paint, tell you what's included, give you links to other resources like the VIP Facebook group, which is a good source of information if you're a Facebook user, tips and tricks, discount codes, all sorts. This is a good one, 20% off if you haven't purchased through the app yet. And you can actually do that if you're an international buyer now, which you couldn't for a while. Okay, my 
a sticker sheet. So let's get into the detail now. As you can see, we have got 64 colors in this, which is a nice old number. I like a kit with a big variety in colors. I do not enjoy kits that only have a few colors for the most part, with a few exceptions where the art's really worth it. But this, this is my bag. <laughs> This is just like Family Circus, which I'm about to finish, which has got 64 colours too. And I love the variety. So when you kind of skim through this, I can see lots of really nice, clear, easy to read symbols, which is always good. I can also see lots and lots of darker tones, which you would expect from the artwork. Obviously, we've got all that uh, night sky and all the shadows and bits. And then the bits of colour are going to be much smaller sections that are just going to pop out against that blackness, I think. So we have got five AB drills. ABs are Aurora Borealis drills. I'll show you when I have a look at the drills in a bit. But basically, they've got a little bit of extra coating on them that makes them super sparkly. And I can tell that there's five because the way that Diamond Art Club in particular labels their drills, they've got their normal DMC codes for anything over 150. But under 150, it will be an AB drill for them. Different providers do different codings for AB drills, um, but that's what they do. So I've got a pink, green, yellow, orange and white AB. So they will pick out really nice accents, I imagine, when I get into the actual painting. Oh, I'm excited for this one. I really am going to be kitting this one up quite soon, I think. So... I'm going to have a little look at the drills. I'm not going to get them all out because particularly with these big rolls of drills, if I try and get in there and pull them all out, I'm not going to get them neat again and then I'm not going to get them stored in the box and it will not fit back in that box because it's a big fat roll of drills for a big fat painting. But we'll have a little look. I know some of the people that do YouTube videos have got really good at taking them out and then rolling them back up again. And I don't know, maybe I could do it, but I'm not brave enough to try. <laughs> but I figure there are plenty of um, YouTube providers out there who do make videos that show them if that's more your thing. So what I want to do is just get a flavour of the colours with you. In fact, let me bring the camera down a bit lower. Okay, the cat's just come in the room and I've had to shut him in with me because the washing machine's going in the background. So I may have to stop and start a bit when he realises he's shut in and hates that. <laughs> so what have we got? I can see straight away some AB drills here. I've got some super sparkly 141 AB drills. Do you know what? I haven't really brought this down low enough, have I? Let's try again. The lower I have it, the less I need to pull them out of the back. So here are some AB drills, as I said. And I'm going to see if I can find my other AB drills and also just give you a kind of overview of the colours that you're going to see if you buy this kit. I can see some yellow ones here quite a lot. AB drills are typically used as accents in paintings, particularly with Diamond Art Club. They don't usually go in for big blocks of them. So having two bags of them, two bags of the white and two bags of the yellow, suggests these are going to be quite plentiful for a Diamond Art Club kit. So that's one, two, nine. That's a lovely pale buttery yellow. I like that. What else have we got? Oh, the ABs are just jumping out at me. Now I like that. Look at that lovely minty green. Isn't that fun? That's a really nice colour. Now, what else was there? There was a sort of pink and an orange, wasn't there? So there is the orange. And last but not least, where's the pink? Where's the pink? Where are you hiding? Sorry if you don't like the crinkling noises. I know not everyone does. Personally, I find it quite satisfying. Um, hmm, that one's eluding me. And I'll have a little look on the other side. Ah, 
There they are. I can just see a glimpse of them in there. I'm losing control of the drill. This isn't good. Right, now let's have a closer look. If I can pull something out from the side that isn't going to disrupt everything. And of course I can't, because they're all wrapped so neatly around each other, which is exactly why I'm put in. Aha! Perfect! Some loose ones. Let's just give you a real close-up to show you some of the kind of quality you're going to be dealing with with Diamond Art Club. So, around a year ago, they started to produce their own drills in-house. And they started to make it so all their square drills on the top of them are uniform. Oh, lost focus there. Um, so all of the drills have um, 13 facets on top instead of nine facets. If you don't know what I mean, if you look at square drills from other providers, some of them will have a little square in the center, some of them will have a little diamond and you'll get a mixture of the two. These will all have the diamond. So they've all got the more faceted option. And as you can see through here, although you never know for sure until you actually start working with drills, but can you see how uniform they look and how little trash there is? And that is what makes these new drills really enjoyable to work with. Newer kits that have come out also have um, a tightened grid because the drills are now so uniform. So they fit together really snugly and beautifully. And I'm assuming that that will be the case with this one. So, anything else that pops out? Ooh, lovely bright blue there. Nice turquoisey green. I always go for the colours. <laughs> I'll end up getting quite bored with all the dark sections in this painting, but I know that it will be absolutely worth it. But yeah, just like I thought really, I think pops of colour amidst quite a lot of blackness. Like if I could find, let's see. I assume there's 310, yes. So there's 310 in this, which is the code for black. I'm gonna guess there's quite a lot of those to start around here. Yeah. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six bags of 310, for example. <laughs> which is exactly what you'd expect, wouldn't it? Isn't it even with this painting? Right. and pack these away and we're going to move on to looking at the canvas just one more shot there for you of the, the lovely array through the side because i think that's really pretty okay onwards okay i've scrolled out pretty much as far as i can and i know it's not going to be nearly enough so i'm going to have to show you this bit by bit and then pan over it but that's okay so Diamond Art Club has this lovely velveteen canvas, which always feels really nice. I'm going to roll it back on itself, which I can do because it's poor glue. This one's got a little bit creased, so I may have to do a little more to flatten it than normal. In fact, that's really quite creased at the end there, which is a shame. Generally, most creases seem to just fall out of a Diamond Art Club canvas I've only ever had one time where there was a little crease that still remained after I worked on it um and I think that was because I had put it there through being silly with it when I wasn't very used to working with them but it shouldn't be a big problem I don't think I mean you can do things like iron canvases if they're a bit creased I'm a bit too nervous to do that because of the things that could go wrong, although there are ways to do it safely. And I believe Diamond Art Club actually has some guidance on their website. I'm not sure. When I come to work at this, I will see how flattened out I can get it. If I think the creases are a problem, I may look into that. But I just, I worry. <laughs> so, let's see. Oh, it's so big. It's so beautiful. Okay. Oh, I just love this. I, you know what it is? I think it really resonates with me because I feel like I've had that feeling before. Standing in a busy city and looking around and just feeling like this moment of stillness, seeing all the hustle and bustle around me. Although I haven't been to wherever this city is because I haven't been to Asia, it still, you know, it makes me think of things like... Times Square or, or Piccadilly Circus in London and I just yeah I kind of feel like I get it oh, 
I'm just, I'm so overwhelmed with how much I love this painting. <laughs> I can't wait to work on it. So let me see if I can show you a little bit more because most of it is in frame actually. So if I just tilt the camera ever so slightly, you can see the top half better. And as I keep saying, I'll, I'll go over it more closely in a bit. One of the other things that really drew me to this one was the rendering. So they, um, when you buy from a lot of good quality Diamond Art Club, uh, a lot of good quality Diamond Art painting companies, they will put up a rendering pic. So they'll show you the original artwork and they'll show you a picture of what it will look like. And I like that. And to be honest, I find it a little off-putting when places don't do that. Um, and it won't be, um, you know, a picture of a completed piece. So sometimes it doesn't do it justice. This one had uh, the standard, you know, computer rendered image and it just looked like they had done such an amazing job with it. Um, I can't wait to start to see people complete it. I mean, I showed it to my husband once. I decided to buy it. I was like, oh, look at this painting that's coming out. And I was showing him the rendering picture and he was going, oh, yeah, it's really nice. But like, there's loads of detail. Like, is that going to come out all right in a diamond painting? I was like, no, that's the rendering picture. And he was like, oh, my goodness. I thought I was looking at the original artwork, like genuinely. Oh, so, yeah, I think you obviously do lose detail. But what they have pulled out is just magnificent. Oh, I'm gushing, aren't I? You can tell how excited I am about this one. So let's start to have a little look. So... I've got one, two, three, four, five are my codes for my AB. So I'm gonna try and have a little look for those. So this patch of road that is caught in street light is kind of one you might expect to find them and you can. Loads and loads of threes, the yellows, loads and loads of whites. Um, so this patch of road is just gonna be shining. And then up in the buildings, where everything's all lit up, I can see loads and loads of fives and twos and fours and ones. So that's where you're going to find your ABs, really. And then against that, you have the starkness of the black, black sky. Like, look at that colour blocking sky. <laughs> I thought it might be a bit more integrated than it is even, but it really is just pitch black. And then some bluey colours as you get closer to the lights of the city. Oh, it's lovely. Oh, I'm like a broken record, aren't I? I just keep saying how much I like it, but I do. So I think what I'm going to do now is do a nice slow pan over the canvas so you can see a bit more detail. And then afterwards, maybe I'll zoom in a bit more and chat through some areas and we'll see what we've got.
hopefully that didn't make you too dizzy. <laughs> it's really hard to uh, pull the camera like smoothly and slowly over the, the canvas and I'm not sure I did too good a job. So sorry if it's a little bit bumpy. So one of the things that stood out to me when I was going over this was confetti. And if you don't know what I mean by that, confetti is when you have a lot of color changes in a small area. So let's zoom in over here. And you can see lots and lots and lots of different symbols. But it's what I would call a sort of manageable kind of confetti, the kind I really enjoy doing. So it's not literally just one drill of this, one drill of that for the most part. It would be a very small block of one colour or, you know, 20, 30 drills of one colour and then switch to another. And I find that pretty manageable, pretty fun. I enjoy the colour changing as long as it's not, you know, crazy. And if you do prefer colour blocking, which is obviously the opposite of confetti, where you have lots and lots and lots of one colour in one go, you have the sky, <laughs> which... I will personally probably find it a little bit boring. I'm glad I'll be working with Diamond Art Club's newer drills, but I'll break that up and do it in manageable chunks. And also further down here in the road section and below in the shadows, you've got some fairly big old sections of colours that will go reasonably quickly. So if you are someone who's really proficient with a multi-placer, you know, there are parts of this that you can get through a lot quicker than others. Looking at the little girl. Look, I don't know why I've assumed it's a little girl. I think more likely a, a grown woman, really, for her to be standing in the road by herself. So there's quite a lot of detail on her. And got lots of lovely shading. A, B's around the outline in places. And she's going to really stand out against the lightness and brightness of this super lit up road. So that, I think, is all I have to say about still waiting. I think you can tell how excited I am about this painting. I was really shocked when it didn't sell out super quickly. You know when you just know a painting's going to be popular and I thought it was going to be one of those. And I was there like on the dot when it came out, like I will be buying this painting. So I'm not sure if maybe it's not quite as popular as I was expecting it to be or whether they just managed to get loads and loads of stock in. But it's still in stock now as of the time that I'm filming this. So do take a look if you're interested. I think this is going to turn out to be one of my favourite paintings that I have ever worked on once I get going with it. So I hope that you've enjoyed that and I will be back soon in a few more days. I'm getting on with unpacking, sorting the house, all of that kind of thing. I expect to finish Family Circus in another sort of two or three more days of diamond painting once I get back into it. So next week, I'm expecting to be posting a post review and kitting down video of Family Circus, which I'm excited for as well. So hopefully you'll join me back there, back here for that. Nice to have you with me today. Bye.